So yesterday, um, I was I was actually reading about your web uh, on your websites, right? Then I came across the, forgive me if I uh, if I don't mention it or the, the Zulka New Year present. Yeah. Yeah. Did I get this right? Yeah. You. All right. Okay. Um, then it's, it's it's something actually that I was really really happy to see, um, especially when I was reading online about Somalia, some of the facts that I could find. And I was very much, I came across very sad media and all that, the way Western, you know, media has portrayed Somalia. Like, how how did the whole project come about for you? Yeah, it was pretty much along the lines of what you also said, like the surprise you had, you know, when you saw those photos. Um, because my mom visited Somalia before the war started in the 80s, okay. twice. All and right. she had a camera with her and she took lots of pictures and I kind of knew those pictures existed and I had seen them before, but I was quite young. All right. So I think back then when I saw them, I didn't quite realize how important and how valuable they really were. Yeah. And then we rediscovered them and I looked at them again and I just thought, wow, this is so amazing. And it's so different from, like you said, what we see and hear about Somalia yeah. in mainstream media and international news, which is very, very negative. And of course, yeah. there are still issues, you know, with the security situation and, you know, like any country has issue, but often it feels very skewed, you know, not very equal in terms of yeah. how, yeah, it's reported about a certain place. So I thought, okay, now it's very important to not keep this um, yeah. treasure, like those yeah. really nice photos uh, in a okay. family album just stored away. We have to right. somehow make it public. Yeah. So I talked to my mom and she said, okay, yes, we can do that. Okay. So that's how the idea came, uh, yeah, came across to me that maybe I can do like a digital photo mm -hmm. gallery. So I scanned all the photos. I tried to like digitally restore mm -hmm. them a little bit. Um, and then I created the website and just put them there. And the response was so positive, especially from Somalis all over the okay. world. Some who maybe were born in Somalia had to mm -hmm. leave because of the war, but also a lot of young people who were born in Europe or America. Yeah. And had never really seen even the yeah country of their roots like that mm. so it was really nice that yeah we were able to show this or share this with so many people yeah actually i must say those were some of some pretty pictures as well especially of the capital and all that yeah, yeah. okay so um, really nice. around which year did you start the uh, collaboration with fatima on the sleep in africa project ah good question when did we start that um, I think it must have been around 2018, maybe. Mm. Yeah, not so long ago, actually. Okay. Um, yeah, we, like I said, we were following each other for, for some time. Mm. Um, just because she has Sleep in Africa, the Instagram page, which is amazing, showcasing mm. like different and unique places to stay around Africa to also yeah. kind of change the narrative. Okay. That you have so many different places you can stay in different countries across the continent and I was traveling a lot uh, in Africa at the time as well. Mm. So we were always exchanging. And at some point we were chatting like, um, have you also noticed that it's really hard if you want to specifically find a black owned or locally owned hotel? It seems to be very hard. Like all the big hotels that you know about often it's, you know, yeah. foreigners. And then we were like, yeah, this is weird. There should be a, a resource. And we re researched it a bit. And we said, there's not really so much, even when you try to research it. So uh, at some point we said why don't we just do it and oh, that's yeah. Yeah, how our idea came about for this black owned hotel list all right so uh, it's it's quite linked to what you refer to as black owned because i saw you use that a lot either is black yeah. owned hotels and rentals or safaris and all that so it's quite yeah. linked to that right yeah exactly so it was always very important to me because um yeah like I said I lived in South Africa for the last six mm. years and I started traveling a lot for my work but then also just personally because mm. I really love the continent and I also felt like similarly to what we discussed with Dulca Hoyo project and kind of the perceptions I grew up with uh from of Somalia yeah. I felt like being in Africa myself you really are able to experience it for yourself and reclaim it as well as yeah. you know someone in the diaspora like we grow up in Europe sometimes we have not a very strong connection because for us 
uh, for me specifically it wasn't able i wasn't able to go on holiday to somalia just because of the war so it was very important to me uh, to travel a lot in africa and then after a while i also just noticed um like most of the people who work in hotels and it's the same for restaurants and i think for other businesses that are very big and successful as well that a lot of the people who work there kind of look like the people from that country or maybe like my family members right. but then as soon as it comes to like management and it gets higher like the ownership yeah. then like, hmm, something doesn't add up so that's also <laughs> how I became very interested in showcasing black owned um, okay. yeah businesses across All the right. continent as well because I think it's important to support okay so um would you mind oh you're back yeah sorry yeah <laughs> no worries All right um, so what were some of our, uh, what I say, are some of the challenges you've encountered so far, you know, with the Sleep in Africa and Zubika Huyo project? Can you repeat that? I didn't quite hear. I'm saying uh, the Zubika Huyo project and uh, mm-hmm. Black-owned businesses and uh, Sleep in Africa projects. What are some of, like, the challenges you've encountered so far? Oh, um, for these kinds of projects, you mean? Um, good question. I think one of the challenges um, is definitely that a lot of people uh, like us, I think it's the same for Melanin Travels, like Doka Hoyo, Sleep in Africa, Black-owned hotelists, we do a lot of this work out of our own resources, like, you know, because we're passionate about it. So we put in our time, sure. effort, even money, like, you know, cost money to host the website um, you know to to put the list there and so on um so i think one challenge is that there there are limited resources for for this kind of stuff for these kinds of projects it would be really nice if if there were some i don't know funding available and i think it's great that the community and people in the diaspora were so passionate that we want to create things ourselves and you know we do this in our spare time and we put our own resources behind it but at some point i think there are also limitations because often you know we might have a day job or studying or doing other things on the side it would be so great if it were more supported maybe on a professional but also financial level so we can even i don't know do more reach more people and so on but would you say if you like you are gaining some sort of patronage from the diaspora? Am I gaining what? Sorry. Like at the sleep in Africa, especially, are you gaining that kind of you know patronage from the diaspora? This- oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, again, I I can't speak for sleep in Africa um generally because that's Fatimatu. Oh, okay. Um, but like I said, I collaborated very closely with her on the black owned hotel list. An accommodations list and that for sure also because we are both two people from the diaspora okay. yeah. um, i'm based, based in, in canada but has very strong links also to west africa specifically because of a family background so i think definitely it also came from that passion to have an even stronger connection support businesses back home um, and we're not the only ones, right? So I think the the overwhelming response also from the diaspora, but also people on the continent was really like, oh, wow, it's really great to have a resource like this. For example, the hotel list or the Dokahoyo photos. And I know many, many other people who are doing like amazing yeah. projects as well. So it's always nice to yeah, support each other online. I think it's a very nice community, especially in, like in the Africa travel space. Right, right. Um, okay, so... um. You spoke of South Africa, uh, so that's another area quite interested in, you know, I've, uh, because somehow, somewhat, I feel, or would I say, South Africa has been portrayed quite a little bit negatively, especially Johannesburg, right? So how long did you say you've been there? You've been in South Africa? I lived there for almost six years. Six years. Um, so. Yeah. Can we still refer to South Africa, Johannesburg as the crime city? You know, that's like some sort of way that's equally... Important. No, definitely not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is also something yeah, I'm very passionate about, to just, again, this idea of changing narratives, because, yeah, we all know this concept of the danger of a single story. So if we keep hearing the same story, okay. you know, too often, then that becomes the reality. Mm-hmm. But... Yeah. In real life, it might be way more nuanced, you know, there are many different sides and facets to it. And I think Joburg is definitely an example. That's why the first 
video that I did on my YouTube channel when I started the YouTube channel last year was actually about Johannesburg yeah. um, and a black owned business there yeah. because I also felt like especially the the city center we call mm -hmm. the CBD the central yeah. business district yeah had such a bad reputation yeah for I time. saw uh, the dress you made on that <laughs> Yeah, 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 that's, that's a Karasi experience. Uh, yes, so if you come to South Africa, you definitely need to check check yeah, it out. We'll it's it's, it's yeah. really cool. I like I like the race you made. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah. yeah, and I've also when I spoke to tourists to mm. visit South Africa, often I've asked them like, "Will you also spend time in Joburg?" And they would say, "No, no, um, we weren't sure whether it's safe." And sometimes yeah. they fly to Johannesburg because it's like a big international airport the biggest i think um but then they go straight somewhere else they don't even stay there or maybe they stay in the airport and i just wow. thought that's so sad because johannesburg <laughs> has so much to offer right? yeah. and of course like i said before any place any country any city has issues sure. and any big city in the world also you have to be careful there's always mm. crime even here in berlin where i'm based again now you can have your phone stolen you know yeah, I know. um so that's just the reality unfortunately but Again, I think Joburg has much, much more to offer than what maybe some people are saying about it. Okay. And yeah, that's why in my, in my video, I really wanted to also interview and showcase a business from someone who lives in Johannesburg, um, especially the CBD, because okay. the current and Sebo, he has this business also in the CBD, which yeah. some people refer to as being very dangerous. So I got to spend lots of time there, thanks to him, to really realize that actually... You know, like it's all relative, it's all nuanced. So if you go with someone who's from there, who knows his way around, um, yeah. you're fine. And you can have an amazing time and meet people and just explore a place for what it really is. So um, what are some of your favorite locations in South Africa? In South Africa? Yeah. Um, I really love Durban. I think Durban is mm. really underrated. Right. Uh, town and Kruger National Park is where people go to. Then a lot of people go hiking, like in the uh, mountains, which is really good in South Africa as well. Yeah. But I really like Durban. It's one of my favorite places. I also feel like what I've heard when some people criticize South Africa is obviously given its past yeah. that some areas still feel quite segregated. Maybe sure. it feels a bit white and then other areas feel black, but there's not so much of a mix and when i went to Devon, i really felt like this feels more mixed like it feels more i don't know yeah it's we felt comfortable there also as people of color going on holiday it didn't yeah. feel like okay. we went to a restaurant and people looked at us funny so that was really nice and it's really warm and humid it's by the indian ocean so i love mm -hmm. it um but i do also love cape town cape town for cape all town. its downside mm -hmm. challenges as well yeah. um it's also, it's one of the most beautiful and scenic places, I think, in the world because mm. you just have the mountain and you have the ocean right next to it and your mind is just blown by how beautiful the city is. Oh. Of Joburg also, I love to. <laughs> uh, you, mentioned, you mentioned mountain climbing and all that. So I think that's something someone should want to add to their itinerary when they are coming to South Africa, right? I think so. You know what? When people ask me what's a or why should I go to South Africa or what's a great country to visit in Africa for the mm. first time, if you want a wide variety of options, South Africa mm. is really amazing mm. because you have people who love hiking, the outdoors, like mountain climbing. You can do all of that in South Africa. Then you have people who love the beach and more warm weather. You can have that in South Africa. Oh. If you want a city getaway and you know be in a big city, go out to art events, concerts concerts partying then you have that as well if you want to go on safari you have so yeah. many options in africa so it's so you have so many options which makes it a really really good holiday destination i would yeah. say then you have wine areas where you can just drink wine if you're into that so it's it's a great place okay. so where are you currently sorry where are you currently uh, i'm back in berlin which is oh. also my home where i was born so oh, okay. I moved back about two months ago uh, from South Africa. Yeah, so I'm trying yeah. to adjust to the cold here in Berlin, which is too cold in winter. It's not nice. <laughs> I I would have I would have mistaken you to be in Berlin by now. You know, <laughs> I think yesterday you posted um, some pictures 
of oh, uh, yes. reading about it. So I was, yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, you're to its second country. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then I would be very close because yeah. Benin is not far from Ghana, yeah. Okay. Benin. But when, when, when do you intend visiting Africa again? Um, luckily, I have a job that makes me travel a lot. Okay. Um, so I will be traveling at the end of the month, first to Senegal and then to Kenya. So I'm very excited to be back in West and East Africa soon. Yeah, I think Senegal is one of your places, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love it. I love the food, the people, everything. Yeah, I mean, that being said, which, 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 um, out of the countries, the African countries you've been to so far, right? Would you say stole your heart in terms of the local dishes? You mean uh, like if I can pick a favorite? Or... Yeah, it would be very country in terms of dishes. Like... Yeah. It's very hard, but I used to always say Senegal, and that's also why I made this YouTube video about why I love it so much. And okay. I think it's just a very personal thing because it really reminded me of everything that my dad told me about what Somalia was like, especially mm. before the war. Okay. And so I think I have a special connection. <laughs> <We're so laughs> but there's so many other countries as well. Of course, South Africa has a special place in my heart now after mm. living there for a while. And I think the first country I went to in Sub-Saharan Africa and then also worked there was Tanzania. Okay. I also really love Tanzania and especially Zanzibar, which also I think the whole Swahili coast and the culture also reminds me a lot of Somalia. So okay. I, I like these influences and Ghana is amazing as well and I mean Ghana is I think maybe the most popular I would say yeah I think yeah which is great and I understand why it's amazing yeah all right um so uh aside the traveling in Africa I guess you do quite a lot of international travels as well less so actually now I think I've been so focused on on Africa but yeah I, I try to the good thing now about being back in Europe it's very easy for us to travel it's cheap and places are close by because countries are just not so big okay. um, this is actually another challenge I would say if we talk about travel in Africa that it's so expensive like yeah. even I remember when we flew from when I flew from South Africa to Botswana um, it was only a one hour or one and a half hour trip and it will cost you so much right. it's really if you can get a flight even for two hundred dollars like you'll be lucky cool. yeah it's really expensive oh and that's uh, but how how do you you know like find flights which websites do you use mostly skyscanner skyscanner, I'm a skyscanner person yeah i guess that's like a world favorite right <laughs> Yes, I love it because I can just compare. But yeah. I know a lot of people also use Google Flights, so mm. depends, I think. Okay, okay. I mean, even with even with Skyscanner, you still found it quite expensive in Africa, right? Yeah, mm. it's really even short distances. Um, it's very expensive to fly, which really is a shame. I remember even when we was when we went Zambia. Mm. Mm. I went with my friend Sebo, who's also in the Johannesburg okay. video. And we ended up um, driving from the Zambia border to Zimbabwe just because mm. the flights from there were way cheaper than, than Zambia. So sometimes if you have the option and different cities and airports are close by, sometimes it's even cheaper to right. move into the neighboring country and fly right. from there. <laughs> Just to save some money, which we right. did. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's very important. <laughs> okay. Um, so I think basically we are done with our interview for today. And nice. I must say, um, it's fun speaking to you. Sure. Uh I'm really very much let me say empowered by what you people are doing, especially the Zulkawiya project and sleep in Africa. I mean, that's more like a way you know, people in the diaspora and even us at home can, you know, promote our continent through our various passions. And I must say that's it's really inspiring. So yeah, that's so nice. like one of my favorite speakers of all time would say, Anita Continua. Oh yes, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's really, it's so really empowering. Yeah. yeah, and I love that, you know, 
now this makes us connect to different people for example now i'm here in germany again and you are in ghana but we are able to speak just because you know we're passionate about the same things and i think this is happening more and more with africans in the diaspora people back home but also now i think a lot of african americans like are coming to ghana are engaging more with africa so i think it's a really nice trend happening Mm -hmm. yeah it was really it was really nice speaking with you today so Right. same so, and i I'll, wish you uh, a good day let me know if you need anything else oh uh, um, well yeah i'll be writing a blog post um out of this so i'll go over the interview then some of the excerpts i'll need i'll note that down and um mm-hmm. more probably we need some pictures of you especially mm-hmm. maybe some that you've traveled to other countries some of your favorites in your gallery and um so yeah basically that's probably what we need going forward okay yeah. i'll look through some and, and send you a selection then you can all pick right. okay so i'm really grateful okay. for that all right thank you as well sure. really yeah, good nice question day. you're doing a good job all right thank you <laughs> all right bye francis bye. sure